To see some advanced features of the Puppet tool, let's navigate to your Project Files folder, then navigate to Chapter 7, then open up the project called Number 7 Puppet Tool AEP. Here we have several different compositions which we can use to explore the Puppet Tool. As a simple recap to what we've covered in the Essential series, to navigate to the Puppet Tool, all we need to do is use Command P or Control P on the PC to bring up the Puppet Tool. Next, clicking on the layer is going to set up the mesh. By clicking anywhere on the layer, After Effects will auto trace the transparency of this frame and give me options to show the mesh, the expansion values of the mesh, and the triangulation of this mesh over the pixels on this layer. I also have some record options, which we'll get to in a little bit. The puppet pin is defined on the layer by this small yellow dot. We can create more puppet pins very easily by simply clicking on the layer at any position over our mesh shape. All of our puppet pins are going to be yellow. The mesh shape itself is defined by the label color of our layer. So changing the label color here to either orange, which may not show up against our layer, to maybe a lavender, which might, will change the mesh shape of the puppet tool. Select the mesh to see what the mesh looks like over our image. We probably want to stick with something dark, so I'll click on the layer and select something like brown. Now we can see the mesh by selecting it in the timeline, and this will display all of the triangulation that the mesh creates. The triangulation value of the mesh is first created when we make our first puppet pin. However, we can change this in our mesh options. In the timeline, we see the triangulation represented by a value underneath mesh 1. By changing this from 350 to something much lower, say 50, we can see the effect of this value as it changes the mesh inside our composition window. The problem this creates is that only the pixels immediately underneath the mesh will be distorted by the puppet tool. If we click and drag the puppet pin on the lower part of his leg, we'll see that moving the mesh removes certain pixels that weren't included in the size of the mesh. By increasing the mesh triangulation back to 350, we include the original pixels into our mesh shape and then we can distort them with the rest of the image. We'll go back and change this value back down to 50 so we can show another problem that occurs when having a low triangulation value. If we click on the leg to create another pin in the middle of the left leg, then move the bottom pin up above it, we can see a very sharp edge where the triangles pinch the pixels as they distort them in the composition window. Up in the options of the toolbar, we can turn off the option to show the mesh. Now we can see the angular distortion that the mesh is making over the pixels. Again, by increasing the value of the triangulation to 300, or even 350, we'll get a much smoother image when we distort the mesh and the pixels underneath it. We can increase the triangulation even further, say to 500 or 550, and get a much smoother result. However, with more triangulation comes more processing time, and this may slow down your render time so be sure to have only as much triangulation as you need to produce a good animation.